Okay, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm taking off this jacket so I can win. Oh, God is so wise because God told me this morning, don't wear a tie. Don't wear a tie today. And I said, but I didn't I had to make sure that I was, you know, hearing from God. So I said, man, so you think I should wear a tie? She said, you don't have to. But you can. I said, yeah, Jeff. That wasn't an answer. That wasn't an I was hoping to be free by saying, yeah, yeah, I'm wearing a tie. But I listened to the Lord and I didn't wear God knew why. Amen. How's everyone this morning? Bless. Bless. Amen. God's going to bless us this morning. In his word, he gave me this word for me. Uh, and I was so excited over it. I said, Lord, well, then maybe I'll share with you. Oh, this morning. Sorry. I think it was just that good. So glad you have a visit with us. I'm the sous chef. Uh, the chef is on vacation. I'm the sous chef. You know, the one who does the little side dishes. I do a side dish. Apostle could bring the main dish. But I'm going to give you a little side dish today. And hopefully you'll be blessed from what God no, you will be blessed. Yes. About what God wants to tell us this morning. Um, we thank God for our, for our singers and for our band and for our anointed dancers. And I tell you all, all of you, really, that God gives you. And that's what God expects and wants. And I kept, I'm so happy to give Apostle a report. And everybody did what they needed to do. And God came in and did what he wanted to do. And that's what we care about, isn't it? But before we get started, can I share a little story with you? No? Yeah. Okay. This is a little boy, and he um, wanted a bicycle. So he told Jesus, he said, Jesus, if you give me a bicycle, I will be good for six weeks. Then he thought about it. He said, I can't be good for six weeks. Who am I kidding? He said, okay, Lord, if you, if you, Give me a bicycle. I'll be good for four weeks. So he's already through the four weeks. And some people I thought, I mean, now I know I can't do four weeks of being good. He got down to two weeks. And again, he really felt that he couldn't do it all. So what he did is he got up out of his chair, went down to the Catholic Church, and took the Virgin Mary, wrapped it up in a, in a, in a, in a blanket, and says, Lord, if you want to see your mother again, <laughs> Okay, some of you get that on the way home tonight. <laughs> I heard that and I fell on the floor. That was so funny. Man. If you will see your mama again, up the bike. <laughs> now let's turn to Psalms 34 this morning and put your finger in there because we're going to be dwelling mostly on uh, that psalm this morning because God has something to say to us. Psalm 34. Psalm 34, that's three and a four. Psalm 34, amen. Parents, you are just anointed. Why do I, you are just anointed. I don't care if there's one here. Under the anointing, they can, they can bring down the anointed presence of God. But that's what's important, amen? amen. We want God to show up. Yes. Listen, if I don't show up, that's okay. But we always need God to show up at our meetings. Amen? amen. Hey, as long as he shows up, it's going to be all right. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. One, one monkey don't stop the show. Yeah. And two don't either. <laughs> but God got a blessing for you. Yeah. Say, Lord, bless me today. Lord, bless me today. Amen. Do we have Psalm 1? Where's Psalm 34? Yes. What does that first verse say? I will bless the Lord at all times. His grace shall continue. I will bless the Lord sometimes. At all I will bless the Lord in good times. All I'll bless the Lord on time. All I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall what? Continually in my mind. And the subject for this point is going to be the power of praise. Amen. The power of people just power in praise. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this way. God can tear down some stuff. If you just learn how to, I'm jumping so ahead of myself. But that, I'm also excited about what God shared with me. Through the power, the power of praise can do amazing things. Yes. But on your part, what do you need to do? Praise. 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 Hallelujah. It says here, here's my seven key points. 
one. The power of praise can and will bring on deliverance. Amen? The power of praise can and will bring on deliverance. Number two. Did everybody get number one? Number two. God will make his presence known through praise. Oh, through praise, God will show up. He'll let his presence be known through praise. God will make his presence be known through praise. Three. I am on three. Number three. We should praise God when things are going well. We should praise God when things are going well. Well, no, but we should praise Him when things are going well. Yeah, but you're right all the time. But we should praise Him when things Let me do my seven points. <laughs> no, but I'm glad you got it, Heather, because you're right. We should praise Him all the time. But say, when God said, praise God when things... It's easy to praise God when it's food on the table. Oh, it's easy to praise God when the job comes through. Yes. Oh, it's so easy to praise God when the big old bonus comes through. Yes. It's easy to praise God when you put your mind to lose 25 pounds and you lose 30. Right. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Right. I'm just telling you, it's easy to praise God when a brand new pair of shoes show up. Right. It's easy to praise God when you go to uh, this store and see this $59 dress on sale, buy one, get one free. Hallelujah. Now you women know, you go to a shoe store. And they said, uh, was it B.O. something? Bogo. Bogo. What's that? Buy one, get one. Boy, you be loading up those, 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 those hearts. But it's, it's it. You all, you know, you all get jumping around the store. Because I got just what I want. Now don't let it be a pair of you, but iron up. And finally it goes down where you can get them. Boy, oh, even though they do pinch your toes, you thank God you got that pair of shoes you're looking for. So it's easy to praise God when things are going well. That was number three. Number four. We should praise God even more so when things are going bad. There's going to be a lot of sidebars this morning, so get ready. Lord, don't be out there looking for some hair pieces, some wigs. Y'all, tear the store down. Thank you, Jesus, for what you was able to pick up and let down. Amen, amen. Okay, number three says, we did three. Number four says, we should praise God even more so when things are going bad. Yes. yes. And that's when you get your yet praise. Yes. Oh, uh, the yet praise is the praise that you can do. Yet things are going bad. Yet I'm going to praise him. Yes. They gave me some bad news, but yet I'm going to praise God. Yes. They told me something couldn't happen. Yet I'm going to praise God. Yes. Because guess who makes the difference? God. Look, God makes a difference, but he's going to make a difference through praise. Yes. You got to thank God because every time you praise God, God's got a new plan for you. Yes. Yes, you might not have got what you wanted, but God is going to give you more than you've even asked for. And you can skip, learn how to yet praise Him. I don't care what the doctor said, yet I'm going to praise Him. Because God has a last say in every situation. We put so much, so much uh, faith in doctors and forget about God. And the doctors tell you, I am practicing medicine. But God don't have to practice it. He got it down pat. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you said, why should I praise God at all times? Because it confuses the devil. Yeah. It confuses him. Because yeah. he says, oh, if I could just tell Sister Potato that Ooh. next week is her last week on the job, it's going to put it into a depression. Okay. Then I can get her and tell her all these crazy things I wanted to know so I can take her away from God. Or take him away from God. But if you can yet praise God, yeah. even when the bad news yeah. comes, it confuses the devil. The devil says, they have got to be crazy. I just dropped a bomb on them, but yet they're praising God. He gets confused. Yeah. 
He says, I don't know if I should bother them or not. If you read and study the word of God, David, I mean, we'll talk about David later on, David acted like he was crazy. Because back in, the, in, in that time, if you act like you're crazy, folks left you alone. They didn't bother with you. And God is saying, if you act crazy, but the crazy praise, the devil's not going to bother you. Right. He's going to walk away and say, he's crazy, I ain't got to do nothing with yeah. He's already stupid. But we're going to talk about it a little. I'm going to go deeper into that later on. Number five, regardless of our wisdom and knowledge. Regardless, and I know I'm on five, aren't I? Yes. Regardless of our wisdom and knowledge, in the presence of fear, these two entities can be depleted. Yes, it can be. When something, you think you have all the knowledge of the Word and the wisdom of God, fear will make you lose all of that stuff. But, they can be restored by praise. Amen. Wisdom will come back to you when you, when you uh, praise. Let me read that again because I know y'all didn't get that. I know all of you didn't get it. Some did. Some the road runner. I know Marisol got it because she'll do a short hand and a heartbeat. But some of you didn't get it. Number five, regardless of our wisdom, and knowledge in the presence of fear, I mean when fear shows up, these two entities can be depleted, can be taken away. When fear says that you forget everything. Oh, don't tell me you don't get you can act stupid when fear is getting. You get to running around like you ain't got good sense, but fear is set in. You don't use wisdom then. Someone comes to you and says, look, you have a you have this bill to do. If you don't pay it, so and so is going to happen. But we'll give you a loan. And because you're afraid of something going wrong, as far as whatever it is, they'll catch you in your weak state and say, we'll give you a loan, and the interest rate will be 59%. All you know is that you're getting some money to pay this bill. But that debt will take you deeper in debt to make you worse. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. But all the wisdom knows can be restored by praise. You need to be honest with God. You need to say, Lord, you see my situation. You see what I'm faced with. But Lord, I need you to move right now for me. And God is going to move for you, but you've got to praise him. I'll give you some instruction this morning. In that deep valley, you need to praise him, oh, yes. and God will take you to the mountaintop. Oh, yes. Because he said, no weapon formed against you. Yes. Did he say so? Yes. He said, when the enemy would come in like a flood, what would happen? Yes. He'll put up a standard. That means he'll let the devil do but so much. But to make these scriptures work, you've got to learn how to praise God. Yes. Praise him in the morning. Praise Him in the new day. Praise Him when the sun goes down. We need to learn to believe what God say is His word and that it's true. And we need to follow through with praise. Mm, there's power in praise. Number six. There are times when we will encounter a cave experience. There are times when we will experience or encounter so a cave experience. Okay, what's a cave? Anyone ever watch the Flintstones? They lived in caves. And somewhere around here, there's a place called caverns. Uh, uh, somebody's caverns. I don't know. But there's all that is underground caves. I don't like caves. We went, I believe we went one time on a vacation to, to uh, Bermuda, and they had caves. Did what jump under the night? No, I ain't going in the cave. No, we ain't going in. We ain't going in the cave. Caves are dark, dreary, and scary. And some caves will cave in on you. So if God wanted me to go under into a cave, He was giving me that cave bravery. He didn't give me that. And I know you spiritual people said, well, I'm God said, God did not give you the spirit of fear. He didn't. That cave did. <laughs> that gave you sense with it. So anyway, that's the case. So 
many of us will encounter cave experiences. We'll talk about that later when we talk about dating. We need to, we need help from the cave of fear. The caves of fear. That could be broken heart, that could be loneliness, it could be separation. Here's the biggie, it could be stress. Stress is a big cave. That will cave in on you if you're not. Cave, stress will make your back hurt. Stress will make your head hurt. It'll bring on a stomach ache. I'm telling you, you ever been there? Nothing's wrong, but you heard something that made you go into stress? All kind of stuff. Your body just don't react right to stress. But praise God will de-stress you. And, and that's it. Now, here we go. Fasten your seatbelts. Most of you know that the first king of Israel was Saul. Amen? Saul did very well for a while, but because of his series of disobedient events, he was rejected as king. You know that. Before he died, before he was removed from his kingship, Samuel the prophet anointed a new king, and his name was David. But there was a gap between the anointing and the coronation of David. During that time period, God did some remarkable things in David's life. As we look back at it, Those, those, were the, those were probably the keys that made, made him the king he ended up being. A lot of times, God will take you through some stuff. Yeah. Because before he gives you some stuff. All right. so, you could do, so you know what to do with that stuff. He knew that David was going to be king, but David had to learn some stuff so he'd be a strong king. Be a king that could stand for what God wanted him to stand for. God does things sometimes in our life so we will be the people we need to be for him. Okay, God knew Saul was going to act ugly, so he put in place a backup plan. God's the only one who can put in backup plans. We can't. But God puts in a backup plan. So if things go wrong, there's already another plan in place to overshadow that which was messed up or tried to be messed up by the enemy. A sidebar. People of God, keep in mind when you decide to take things into your own hands, to abandon what God has called you to do and be, God has a backup plan, and the plan is to help you get right, or get left, or get replaced. Ooh. Now, if, 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 if Ralph Carboy Sr., Dr. Scooter, decides that I've got so important, and I don't like the way things are being done by headship. I'm going to another church. Guess what God will do? Put them on right there and do what I was doing better. And then when I get to trip over to somebody else's place to contaminate that, because when you get when you get place, you're messing up other places. When you can't get along in, on the east side, you can't get along on the west side because that same demon that messed with you over here follows you right over there and you continue in your stuff. So you need to stay where you are and let God fix you to be what he needs you to be. Oh, that was a sidebar. Because how does go with praise? Because if you had praised God in the time of your so-called misunderstanding or your so-called confusion, God would have straightened you out so you could see better clearly. The enemy is always out to kill, steal, and destroy you. And whenever he can do that, he will do it, but you have every right to accept what he's saying or put him aside. Yes. How do I know if it's God? Read the word. If it lines up with the word, then it's God. If it lines up with what Sister Suki told you, it's not God. Sister Suki's all messed up. So she needs a party. Girl, you need to come with me. And you go with Sister Sister Suki, get over there on the other side of the river, and she'll leave you over there and go someplace else. <laughs> rolling stones continue to roll. And you gotta be careful because the rolling stone can pick up stuff along the way. And that rolling stone will roll back on you. So don't listen to man, but listen to God. Because God knows what to do. Amen. 
And if you just praise him in your situation, things will look more clear. The just would settle. You can see God and what God wants to do for you. But the devil wants to cloud your give your vision to cause a division that you might miss out on God. Hallelujah. You need to praise him. You need to magnify God. You need to glorify God in your undone condition, especially. Because God knows some things. Oh, oh. God knows all things. So let's continue. After David killed Goliath, we know that he became a musician in Saul's household and played the harp to calm the demons in Saul. When you get off track and not follow God, you best believe you're following a demonic power. Some people want to want to clean it up. Well, you know, you just being, you just being, you know. He's just being bothered because of the way he you. It's our demon. There ain't no need we will dress it up. I can bring a horse out here and put a dress on it. It is still a horse, and I need to do a snatch off that dress, and you see nothing but a horse. The devil is a devil, I don't care where he goes. Okay. So he played, so we know the devil played the harp to come to the demons and song. He became a military man and was responsible for military victories. He was brought right into the king's table. We talked about what happened along the way. But as soon as, but at, but soon a song was being sung, and it went something like this: Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousand. And that ticked off Saul when he got mad. So he became very jealous. And on one occasion, he tried to throw a spear at David to kill him. After a series of events, it became obvious that David's life was in jeopardy. Saul's son, Jonathan, made that very clear to David. David then, after having this anointing and all his acclaim, was forced to flee. David sought refuge among the Philistines because he thought he could hide his identity. However, Achish, the king of Gath, found out who David was. So he, so to keep from killing David, David pretended to be insane. You know what about being insane? Yeah. Because in those days, if a person was declared insane, you could not harm them. So David did that, and King, uh, uh, King a Achish said, get him out of here, it's crazy. He said, I got enough crazies in here, I don't need him. So he left David alone. David put on an Academy Award performance. You can read it in first Psalm, 1 first Samuel 21. God made an, ex an escape for David to a cave, and while David was alone in his cave, he wrote the 34th Psalm. Let's open up the Psalm 34. Because God had delivered him, and because God wants to deliver you, and because God has delivered, how many have been de delivered out of some stuff? Amen. Oh, see, a few people have. I know I have. Amen. See, some of y'all are not so saved. When you got to say, ain't nothing now bothered you. You're just able to say, I'm to my Honda and all that stuff, and I'm just good. No. No, no. Everybody been in a cave. Everybody's been delivered from something. Some folks make you angry because they act like they jumped, they had tea with Jesus last night. They never been faced with nothing. They don't quite understand why you're supposed to be saved. You should be doing this. They wear the long, long, long dresses and, and cotton stockings and doilies on their heads and all this carrying on. They're having a way of God, having a look like they, they're godly. But Lord, if you follow them home, ah, Jesus is my husband. Yeah, if you get down there uh, early enough in the morning to their house. You might see Jesus coming out the front door. So don't be like that. Don't be so sad that you don't remember from whence God brought you. But everyone came out of something. 
Everybody overcame something. Yeah. Somebody got victory over something or some things. Yeah. And once you, when you got delivered, did you feel good? Yeah. Did you feel like you could just walk on clouds? Yeah. Yes, you do. You feel great. And you know what we would say? What the Psalm 34 say? I will do what? That's the Lord. You have, to, you have to proclaim that I will bless the Lord all the time. Because what he brought me out of, I could have died and gone to hell. I could have missed out on being saved. But because God took enough love and he loved saved me, I'm going to tell you today, I'm going to bless the Lord at all the time. And his lips are his praise your what? Hallelujah. What does it say next? Make boast in the Lord. What? God. I want you to do what? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. When we experience victories and deliverances, we should shout out from the highest mountain. I will magnify, oh, come and magnify the Lord with me. Oh, God healed me from cancer. I want to magnify him today. God delivered me from that tongue so demon. I want to magnify God today because he could have left me in that un undone condition. But he allowed me to come up out of the horrible pit. So I want to bless the Lord at all times. It's crazy you all continue to be in my mouth. But I'm not going to forget what God has done for me. Hallelujah. He brought me out of the mouth clay. He placed my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. That's why I can sing hallelujah. That's the highest praise you can give God. Yeah, hallelujah. Oh, I thank God. Let me tell you something. Think of God. Praise the God will do something for you. He will do something with you. When you learn how to praise God, when trouble comes up, if you praise God, he'll come in that problem with you. And he'll pick you by the hand and he'll pull you out. He's done it for me. He'll do it for you. He always wants to deliver us. But we have to be brave enough to praise him even in that condition. Some of you heard some bad news this week. And I'm going to tell you what, I mean, last week, but this week, you need to start praising God. Yeah. And that thing will be turned around. He'll take the bad news and make it good news because all things work together for good. For them that love God and for them, what? I've read a story in the Bible with a man named Silas, Paul and Silas. They say they were sitting up in jail with a whole bunch of other prisoners. But they said about midnight. They started singing praises and all kind of songs to the Lord. They said they sang so. They said, oh, they sang so that the foundation of the jail began to rock. Hallelujah. And the doors of the jail flew open and they were set free. I'm telling you this morning, uh, some of you, the devil trying to lock some of you in some jails. Uh, but God said, if you just praise me, uh, I'll bring in an earthquake. And I'll go open the door and you'll be walking out free. Yeah. They praise God so that the shackles fell off. God said, if you praise me today, those shackles will fall off. The shackles of depression will fall off. The shackles of defeat will fall off. But you need to learn how to praise me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come one day, I'm going to praise God. Come one day, I'm going to magnify Him. Come one day, God, God the answer. Come one day, I'm going to praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah. You're going to praise Him. Oh, you got to praise Him when you're going through. Because praising is what I do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're praising when you're sad, he'll bring a spirit of gladness into your spirit. But you've got to praise him. Yes. In everything I do. Because praise is I don't know. See, he didn't say complaining's what I do. He didn't say mumbling and grumbling what I do. He said praise is what I do. And you learn how to, Oh, God, help me, Jesus. He said you're going to praise him continually. Yes. There's a song they used to sing years ago. You all probably wouldn't even born again. There's a song they said, perpetual praise. Yes. 
you have your perpetual praise? You've all got to learn, I got to learn how to have a perpetual praise. You need to walk out your house on, in the morning praising God. You need to get in your job praising God. You should, no matter what comes up, you should learn how to praise God. It's not easy, but God says, if you're praising me when things are going bad, I will show up. If you praise me when the enemy's fighting you, I will fix it. If you praise me when the wind and the wave begin to blow, I will fix it. Like you got to learn how to do what? Praise God. When your little hope is gone, don't fall into despair. Just remember God, he's standing there. And when the winds of destruction, he's blowing, 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 blowing. Just look up. See God. Help is on the way. But your help can only come when you praise him. Oh, I tell you, if you're crazy, the devil will think you're crazy and get out of your business. Oh, when you get this, the devil will still say, I can't bring them bad news anymore. Because they ain't going to pay any attention to the bad news. They got the nerve to praise God when I brought them some bad news. So I can't even bring them bad news because they won't accept it. Because I heard them say, praise is what I do. And Lord, it's all because of you. Hallelujah. I just want to say this morning, I've talked enough. I got more that I could say. But then it might be me saying it, not God. And I don't want to say nothing that God doesn't want us to say. But you need to praise Him. When things are going bad, you need to praise Him. No matter what folks say about it, it ain't going to happen. I can't do it. You got to praise Him. Say, Lord, I praise you anyhow. I praise you anyhow. I'm going to have a yet praise anyhow. Because praise is what I've been made to do. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the praise. We thank you for giving us the, the key to our victorious walk. And we know now when things look like it's not quite what it needs to be. Even when that bill collector comes with his threats, I'm going to praise you. Because in praising you, you come into a situation and you make the bad times good. You make me great, but if I praise you, I can become greater in you. And we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. If anyone wants prayer, come. I want to praise with you. Because praise is what I do.